Hello, we are grateful that you are here joining us in this tutorial where we are going to be learning how to use Lexica AI. I'll be leaving the link in the description of this video that is lexica.art, that is lexica.art, so that if you want to try that, you'll be able to try this. You notice the number, you notice the kind of images we have here at Lexica and you can use Lexica to create your own images. So you'll simply go to Lexica website, that is lexica.at here, that is lexica.at. And then you notice up the top here, you can click on get started. And then you can continue with the email or with your Gmail. And then you'll click on continue after you input that. And it will bring you to this site. So. These are all images generated using Lexica AI. So to start generating your images, you will simply come at the top here where you see home, generate, history, likes, and account, and you will click on generate. Once you click that, it brings you to this site where you can now generate your images. You notice I already have images of cows that I had generated, but I'm going to be showing you how to generate that. Then next, I'll show you how to use these dimensions here and the Lexica aperture. These are under advanced settings. So if you don't find them here, then possibly your template, possibly your homepage will be looking like this where advanced setting drop down menu is hidden. You click on that to reveal it this way. So under here where you describe your image, this is where you are going to type what you need. For instance, I'm going to type here a yellow butterfly. The negative prompt, what we do with the negative prompt is that you type what you don't want to appear in your image. For instance, in this case, you notice, for example, you are given text. You don't want any text on your butterfly. You can do that. So I'm basically going to assume for a butterfly, the possibility of having flowers is very high. Do I need those flowers? Maybe yes, maybe no. Or maybe trees. I don't want to see trees. So that's what I'll type here. So for instance here, I'll type no flowers so that now we see if it will be able to generate that. That yellow butterfly without flowers. Before I click on generate, let me explain these dimensions here. For these dimensions, you can change them. For instance, if you want a different dimension, you simply drag this and you notice the more I drag it to the left, the more I get a landscape dimension. And the more I drag it to the right, the more I get a portrait dimension. If I bring it to the center, then I simply get a square dimension. So that is how you use the dimensions. So for the advanced settings, if now you click on that and they open, you notice we have the model type and then we have the guidance scale. So for the model type here, for lexica.at, we have two types. We have Lexica Aperture V3 and we have Lexica Aperture V2. We are going to be trying this both so that you can see the difference. And then for the guidance scale is how much freedom do you give to Lexica to interpret your prompt here. So if you reduce the guidance scale, you give a lot of room to the Lexica Arts, to Lexica AI to generate an image. You give it a lot of room for its own creativity. If you put this high, it means you are now reducing room for its creativity. So we are going to be leaving that at seven and then we are going to be creating another image using the same prompt, but changing these settings. So for now we are going to leave them as they are, default square here, and then guidance scale at seven. And then we are going to be using Lexica Aperture V3. Then for the next image, we will change a few settings to see the difference. So I want a yellow butterfly and I don't need any flowers. So I'll click now on generate here. And then I'll give it a bit of some time to generate the images. You notice here, it's already generating the image. And here they are. You notice we have our images here. In the first image, you notice we have flowers and our prompt was no flowers. You notice in the second image, we have the butterfly with no flowers. Then we have this other one, but there's a flower down here, if you notice. And then we have this one that 
doesn't really seem to have a flower but has a faded background. You can zoom the image by simply clicking on that image and so you are able to view the image. You notice the image is crispy clean and that's how you generate images here. You want to download the image, you can simply click on that, right click and click on save image as. You notice once you go above an image, you get these options here, which is another option to download. I can also use that instead of the first method. So that's the second method to download. So I want to use the same prompt here, a butterfly and then no flowers, but then I want to use here the Lexica Aperture V2. I'll click on Lexica Aperture V2, then I'll click on Generate to just show you the difference between the two model types. So you notice now, look at the images generated using V2. So finally, I want to show you how to use image to image. So I'm going to click on Upload Image and then I'll upload my logo. So my logo is uploaded there. So whatever I want to type here, I want it to be generated on image to image. I want it to generate a wall, but this is the template. So it may look weird using this one, but that's how you use it. So I'll click on generate. I've uploaded image to image. Then I'll give it time to generate. And there it is. You notice it translates that to be this as a wall. Guidance to scale may not be applying a lot in terms of image to image. So I'll close the image right here, brick wall, put this at two and click on generate so that you see the difference. A brick wall generated with guidance scale of two. And then I'll put that the next image at a guidance scale of the highest value. So that's a wall generated with guidance two, a brick wall. You notice it's accurate. Then I'll keep the same prompt but give a high guidance scale. I'll click on generate. And now you notice the difference. Now, when the guidance scale is low, you notice the creativity was too high. It had put some sky, some trees around this and all that. But with the guidance scale being high, you notice our walls are just walls, very accurate without a lot of decoration. So that is how you use the guidance scale to get the accuracy of the image you need. You put it high to make sure Lexica Art does not use a lot of creativity. Now for the history, you simply come to the history and uh, you are able to see the images you have generated. So if now I scroll down, you notice all the images I have generated. This is where I find them. For the likes, if now I like any of the images, that is where I find them. So if I go to my history, and then I want to like this image, this center one, it's unique. So I click on that. So I have just clicked on the heart at the top here. So if I go to likes, you notice it's now there. So if I click on another one, let me click on the, the butterfly ones. So I'll click on uh, this one here, the heart at the top, I'll click on that once. Then if now I come to my likes, I'm able now to see my butterfly here. So that is how you use the likes. And of course now under accounts, you are able now to get your account here. You are able to see your membership here and you can choose a plan that works for you. That is for a starter, $8 per month, build annually at 96 per year. Then we have the pro and then we have the max, which have different prices. So I hope that has been helpful. Kindly like this video, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel.